welcome to Hebei, a place that you've probably never heard about and it's actually a place that I've never been to until today. Um, so in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it is, what you can do here, apart from <laughs> ride the horse. It looks like I have a horse butt. <laughs> Okay, it's time to take the drone for a spin. Let's go! Woohoo! Okay, time to learn a bit about Hebei. Firstly, where is it? So we've got Beijing and Tianjin, two major cities in the north of China. Hebei is like nestled to the to the west of those, kind of in between them, and it's a really, really big province. It's got a population of about 35 million people. So I'm currently in a county of Hebei known as Weichang, and although it's the biggest county in all of Hebei, it's also the most sparsely populated. So the really interesting thing about Hebei is it changes so much depending on the season. It's different in summer, to spring, to winter, to autumn. You'll see a different Hebei every time that you come. So I'm here at the moment in autumn, so everything has kind of gone a little yellow and brown. And everyone keeps telling me, you should have been here five weeks ago, everything was so green. So here is some footage I prepared earlier of what this place actually looks like in summer. much as everyone's been telling me you should have been here in the summer I think that coming in autumn definitely has its benefits and I want to share those with you today so now can you see why the only place you would want to be in autumn is Hebei check out those colors So as an Australian, I find this scenery especially beautiful. In Australia, we don't really have much of the deciduous trees that give these beautiful orange, yellow, crazy colors. In Australia, we mostly have gum trees and they stay as they are all year round. They're pretty hardcore. So I don't really get to see this kind of landscape and scenery ever. Also, another fun fact I just learned about Hebei. Um, attention all potato lovers, Hebei is the place to be. Oh my God. It's a giant potato! So welcome to the Potato Museum of Hebei! <laughs> this is so entertaining, I've never seen a museum dedicated to like potatoes before. It's like a talking potato. <laughs> so I've just learned that all of the McDonald's and KFCs of Beijing is all supplied from the potatoes of this region here in Weichang. Like, that is a lot of potato! <laughs> it's a potato pillow. I'm way too entertained by this place. <laughs> the weather literally just randomly changed and we found ourselves in the middle of a, like a massive storm. But ain't nothing gonna kill my vibe. So we're gonna drink some wine. So much wine. Aside from all those potatoes, Hebei also has a lot of other land that can be used for growing other scrumptious things. So one thing that Hebei is really well known for that you may not know about is their alcohol and wine. Um, it's really well known in Hebei, very, very popular. I've been told it has a really unique taste um, and that it's very, very strong. <laughs> so I asked for a taste and she's given me what she's called a mild alcohol. This is almost 40% alcohol. Um, so for me, this is very high. Oh! Very strong, very strong, but tastes good. So I've just been told that these massive pots, they actually fit 500 liters of alcohol, and I guess that would last you a really long time, for me a lifetime. Ah, so this is the person who's receiving it, and I've just been told this is a celebrity in Hong Kong, so <laughs> I guess that explains why he's getting such a large pot of alcohol. I want to show you more about this beautiful, beautiful province and why you should consider coming here. Let's go!
what I'm here for today are the grasslands and Hobay is full of them. But not only are these grasslands beautiful to look at, they're also steeped in history. So right now I'm standing at the Mulan paddocks, which is the former site of the imperial hunt of the Qing dynasty. So in simpler terms, this is the place where emperors of the Qing dynasty came to conduct their annual hunt. So this annual hunt, it was a huge event with the emperor as well as thousands of others participating and residing in this area for up to a month. So these emperors had a huge influence on this region. So what these emperors did is they expanded and ritualized this tradition of the imperial hunt in order to preserve the traditional Manchurian way of life. So the first stop today is a little tourist village. It's known as Kangxi Yinma Station. So it's named after the Emperor Kangxi and basically the function of this town back in the old days was a place for the Emperor to bring his, um, his horses to drink. So now this little tourist town is all about Kangxi. You can see him everywhere, he's on t-shirts, bags, sides of walls, there yeah. He's a dominant presence here in this little town. But yeah, the town itself is really cute. And now I'm about to show you what I think is the highlight of this town. It's so weird, check it out. So it looks like food, right? Actually, it's all rock. <laughs> Surprising, huh? They've got like these little dumplings. They've got what looks like fish and peanuts and it's all just rocks. So here you can also find some local handicrafts and I'm actually about to try my hand at doing one. <笑>我可以试试吗可以这个好难这个好难如果是我做的我需要不是半个月一个好难一年吗一年吗还不够<笑><笑> So this is a skill that's really dominant in the Manzu tradition. So it's just incredibly fine needlework. Check out this panda, all needlework. So last off we were at a station named after Emperor Kangxi. Now we're at another tourist station named after Emperor Qianlong. Why is this station called Qianlong? Because in our Qianlong Huangdi, the most famous king of the century is the most famous king. And he likes to play the game, the game. And he likes to play the game, the most famous king. Let's go, let's go check it out. Come on! Two very different vibes, two very different places. So I just learned that this place is actually super convenient. You can come here and just learn everything you need to know about the Weichang area. You can see it on the map here, you can see where it is. And if you see somewhere that catches your interest, you can go on one of these screens and you can learn all more about it. You can even buy tickets to those places on those screens. So if you're thinking about coming to Hebei, to this Weichang area and checking out the grasslands, I would suggest you come here as maybe your first stop. <laughs> here they even have a virtual reality station and this is actually gonna be my first time ever experiencing virtual reality so I'm pretty excited Whoa. the chair is moving okay so that was an experience um, less virtual reality more virtual vomit it's like a literal vomit machine so I hope you've liked Hobe as much as I have um, and I hope that maybe one day you'll get the chance to come here I'll see you next time bye